What's up guys, David Land here bringing you another die cast review. This is on the 2000 Kenny Breck Shell Reynard Ford Firestone from the aforementioned 2000 Cart series. He drove for Ray Hall Letterman. I think that was the first year they called it Ray Hall Letterman. I'm pretty sure they didn't call it Team Ray Hall um, because David Letterman had kind of stepped out of the shadows and said, yes, I own this team or help own this team or whatever. Uh, but this is produced by Action Performance, a.k.a. Action Racing Collectibles, a.k.a. what is now known as Lionel. So many of you may not know that they produced IndyCar diecast in the early 2000s during what a lot of us consider the golden age of diecast. And yes, uh, you can say Lionel produced IndyCar diecast. But anyway, uh, this is a Kenny Brex uh, number eight car from the Kart series of 2000. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful car that I got on eBay. Uh, it was just kind of on eBay with no bids. And I'm like, well, I would absolutely love to take that. Now, this car is a gold series car, at least what uh, Lionel collectors will consider a gold series car these days. Uh, they did both gold series and elite cars back in those days. And the difference is the shock cover on the front of the car came off and the rear engine cowling came off. Now, none of those features, I believe, are featured on this car. There is also no driver detail. Um, on the elite cars, there was a driver figure included. There is no driver figure with this car. Doesn't bother me. I'm in it for the car, not for the opening features. Uh, you can see Kenny Breck, uh, number eight shell, 2000 Reynard, one of 2,500 produced, and it's ages 14 and up. Just a quick look at the box. Um, this is something I really wanted to, to get. While I have, I think, two other Reynards um, in terms of uh, die cast in the 118 scale, I don't have a quote-unquote modern Reynard until now. Uh, and since Indy cars are going to more this style of bodywork for 2018 with their spec aero kit, uh, I think uh, this is something uh, I really want in the collection because uh, this stuff might end up getting uh, kind of valuable at some point. Uh, but another fabulous cart die cast, so let's get it out of the box and take a look at it. Oh yeah, baby! I knew as soon as I took this thing out of the box, uh, I had come into something very, very cool. Uh, this car, just, I mean, just look at it. It's beautiful. Very, very excellent. The proportions are unbelievable. Uh, action was really on their game in the mid-2000s, uh, or the early 2000s. Really early 2000s with the, uh, with the uh, uh, obviously, this is a car from 2000. So, uh, they were really on their game. This is uh, an incredible replica of uh, Kenny Breck's number eight shell car from the year 2000. Of course, Kenny Breck uh, was the uh, Indianapolis 500 champion from 1999. He's kind of the forgotten Indy 500 champion. He's probably a, car, a driver you could trick some people with um, if you ever wanted to do trivia. Say, uh, who was the 1999 Indy 500 winner? That would probably be, probably be the guy you could trip people up with. Um, but Kenny Breck, actually, in my opinion, is one of the long-forgotten talents, and it's really a shame. I was just recently watching a kart race on YouTube from 2000 from uh, Diecast Review's favorite uh, uh, circuit, Chicago Motor Speedway. No, not Chicagoland, Chicago Motor Speedway. Look it up if you don't know what that is. Uh, but it was fabulous. He put one of the best moves I've ever seen uh, on Elio Castroneves, made uh, Castroneves look uh look kind of <laughs> look kind of silly because he like drove all the way two wheels on on a flat apron on a banked corner and passed uh elio for the win now uh this car uh represents of course uh breck's 2000 season now uh he went from the high of the indianapolis 500 to kind of a uh, uh, an incognito year in cart in 2000 now, he was actually a championship contender, but it was because of his consistency rather than his uh, outright wins and outright pace. Uh, he ended up fourth in the championship, had a couple second places, uh, but didn't have, didn't have a breakthrough win. Now, those would all come in 2001 uh, when he really started mollywopping the field, and it was uh, kind of unfortunate that he didn't win the championship that year. Uh, that was probably, you could probably blame that on a confrontation at the Michigan 500 where uh, he had some contact with his teammate, uh, Max Pappas, and it took him out of the win there and probably sunk his championship hopes. Uh, but that was, of course, with a Lola chassis. This is a Reynard. Um, they actually, Action actually produced the Lola chassis as well, though it is in the, 
the short oval configuration, which back in the day for cart meant it had a really weird looking rear wing. Uh, very high, very big rear wing with small front wings. It's a kind of weird looking die cast, so I'm kind of glad I got picked up the Reynard. I think it looks a little bit better. Uh, so, uh, beautiful, beautiful car. Just a wonderful detailing. Uh, the decals are all where they need to be. Uh, obviously, you can see not a whole lot of cockpit detail. Again, Gold Series car. Uh, that's what you're going to get with that. Um, but this is kind of the thing if you're talking about the 2018 IndyCar Aero Kits. This is kind of the look they're going for with a, just a plain roll hoop and a very low slung um, engine cover. And as you can tell, that's something that makes the car... It really does look fast just standing still. I mean, you have to admit that even if you're a, a person who likes the look of current Indy cars. Um, I think in terms of looks, these were amazing. You can see HP. That's a sponsor we're kind of familiar with in modern-day Indy cars. Just an absolutely beautiful car. Here's what it looks like on the bottom. And you get some of the molding, some of the strakes, the aerodynamic strakes. Action Racing, made in China. And you get the cart logo, 118. Uh, and then this is kind of disappointing. The suspension kind of seems to have warped inwards uh, in the box for near enough 20 years. That's kind of unfortunate. I'm not really sure how to fix that, uh, if I could fix it at all. But whatever. Uh, not a huge problem. Of course, also the front wheels turn, which I was kind of surprised to see. They go, they go right a lot better than they go left. And of course, the, the steering wheel, which does have some detail. I'll take a close look at that. It does turn. So that's cool. Again, that's another detail we just don't get on cars anymore, uh, on die-cast cars anymore. Um, kind of unfortunate. As you can see, the uh, engine cover and the shock cover, those, those suckers are glued on there. Though you can tell they're separate parts. Uh, they glued them on there probably because they didn't include any you know, engine detail. It's probably hollow in there. Uh, but I think this is a fantastic, fantastic looking die-cast. I'm so happy to add it to the collection. It's just beautiful. Just beautiful. I mean, it's, oh, it's a lovely, lovely car. Uh, I wonder I wonder if you can go to uh, shellracingusa.com and win cool stuff. Wow, look at the decals underneath there, too. This is really cool. I kind of want to do some, a little more detail work here because I just realized there's, like, sponsors all over this thing. And look at the side pods, too. The side pods are wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, <laughs> so let's wrap this die-cast review up. I think this is a fantastic looking piece. I'm really happy to add it to the collection. Uh, wonderful car. Uh, a lot of memories for me, of course, as with all these cart die-casts, this was kind of what caught my attention as a young uh, boy uh, and uh, really made me love uh, racing. Uh, so I'm really happy you guys watched this video. I'm really happy to have this car. Uh, it's, it's an absolutely beautiful piece of die cast and will look great in my collection. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah!